So fundamental to all the applications that you build is the data that you load into them. And for the runtime, we support the data coming via services from your enterprise servers or your online services. But we also support data coming from OGC services, WMTS, WMS, WFS. But it's not just service content that we support within the runtime. We've got support for local content as well. Think files like Shapefile, geodatabases, geo packages from the OGC, ENC for nautical information, imagery and raster files, KML, and all the packages that you can create with ArcGIS Pro, you can load directly into runtime. And with every release, we release more and more functionality in the layers and data areas. So what I'd like to do now is pass over to David from the runtime team, and he's going to show us some enhancements. Great. Thanks, Ewan. Over the past year, we've added significant new 2D and 3D visualization capabilities in ArcGIS runtime. Let's take a look at a few of the highlights. The first is mobile scene packages. These can be created with ArcGIS Pro and are a portable and efficient way to bring 3D content to your offline users. This mobile scene package here that we're looking at is of Philadelphia, and it contains three layers. A tile package containing elevation data, another tile package containing imagery base map, and a scene layer package providing the 3D buildings. Second is point cloud layer. In this example, a LiDAR survey file covering an area of downtown San Diego has been converted to a point cloud layer for display in the ArcGIS runtime. The runtime performs really well with, this, with these point cloud layers, as you can see with this data set that contains over 11 million data points rendered based on their elevation. Third is point scene layer. In many workflows, you need great display performance, and you want to interact with your data to identify features and access attribute information. This scene contains a point scene layer with tens of thousands of airports from around the world. Distance-based indexing filters the features to only display a subset without overwhelming the view. As I zoom in, additional data is progressively rendered, giving optimal visualization performance and a great user experience. Features within the point scene layers support identify, selection, and access to attribute data, as you can see, see here with this pop-up. Four is support for subsurface content. In this scene, I've slightly reduced the surface opacity property, and you can faintly see some of the pictures, or some of the features, rather, in the center of the view. These are underground boreholes and survey points. Setting the navigation constraint property to none also enables you to navigate between, beneath the surface and view and interact with features as if they were above ground. Fifth is support for map reference scale and annotation layers. This map contains two layers from an electric utility network. As I zoom in and out, Notice the symbols increasing and decreasing. This map has a reference scale set which ensures the symbols are displayed at the intended size and specified map scale. Zooming in further, you can see text showing attribute information for the utility network lines. This text is from an annotation layer which provides precise control over the placement and text relative to the feature that it represents. And sixth is the ability to create and edit KML data. This extends the previously read-only support for KML, enabling you to add place marks, lines, polygons, ground overlays, and screen overlays. Here, I'll add a couple of place marks to a parade route in DC. I can save this to a KMZ file, and I can share it with other departments and agencies. You've just seen six recent enhancements we've made to 2D and 3D visualization in ArcGIS runtime. And with that, I'll hand it back to you, Ewan. Thank you, David.